Hello guys! Happy New Year! It's the first day of the year, the first day of the month and it's the first day of the week. Today it's Monday 1st of January 2018 and it was such a full, exciting, stressful, crazy year that I learned so much and my eagerness and passion for wine grew even more and I finally took the decision to start my own YouTube channel, so welcome! Right, so today's video is all about my Christmas and New Year's wine. Right, so let's get started! Wine number one. Let's start with the sparklings because, uh, well, there's no reason not to. I always want to welcome my guests with a nice, refreshing, generous sparkling wine and the first one that we're going to talk about is the Caranica Asirtico Xinomavro Cuvée Prestige 2015 yeah that's the label right here and if you want to take a look at the back label <laughs> I love this wine so very much first of all I find that the balance of Asirtico and Xinomavro is so beautiful with the purity of the fruit and the bouquet of the wine. It's just absolutely stunning. Really refreshing with a very nice citrus elegance but with loads of toasty, briosi aromas all lifted by the sharp freshness. You know, the mouth-watering feeling that you feel on the back of your mouth. A little word about Lawrence Karanika, who is the owner, winemaker, viticulturist, marketeer. <laughs> He's an amazing person, a really uh, inspired and inspiring individual. I love listening to him. He's working with organic and biodynamic ways. I really find that he's one of the people that he's pushing the frontiers of Greek winemaking. So I have huge respect for him and especially for his wines. Yes, that's a wine that it's made with a traditional champagne method. So there is a second fermentation uh, and the wine uh, stays on its lees for almost yeah, 12 months, 12 months. It's 70% Asirtico and 30% Xinomavra. So yeah, a really good one if you want to give a try to a Greek sparkling wine. Oh, note here, all the wines that we're going to talk about today are all Greek. No surprises there. <laughs> anyway, uh, just a quick note on this second one, uh, because that's also a sparkling from uh, Karanika uh, Domaine, but this one is a rosé. And I love, love, love a good rosé sparkling wine. Uh, and this is a 100% uh, Xinomavro uh, from 2016. The wine has undergone secondary fermentation. And this one is basically my mom's favorite. She loves that stuff and I cannot blame her. This, got, this wine just demonstrates this beautiful freshness of crunchy red fruit with lots of strawberry and raspberry aromas. Just bouncing uh, from your glass. It's absolutely amazing. So if you are a rosé wine lover and enjoy the lovely um, sparkling uh, personality of the wine, give Karanika a try. It's a really, really good one. Again, organic and biodynamic. So, I mean, yeah, it's an amazing wine. Next up, we have a semi-steel, semi-sparkling wine. Hmm, I wonder how that will go down with you guys because I absolutely love it. It's the first time I've ever tried it and uh, I was not disappointed. I just have to say, I was not disappointed. If you have already tried it, please let me know in the comments below what you think about it. But let me just tell you that this is an unfiltered pet nut, meaning pétillant naturel, so with a little sparkle, but it's um, a natural sparkle coming from just the wine fermentation. And this is a retina. Yeah, I know. I know, I'm getting a little bit controversial here. I understand that. But hear me out. So this, I thought that it was a beautiful, fun retina. Just something really great and really different to try out with um, fish and fried seafood and fried uh, suhini or 
um, any type of tomato bowls or salmon bowls, anything fried, even fish and chips, I think that they will go so well with something like that. Uh, so if you've never tried Retsina before, it has quite an intense pine mastica type of flavor, but the light sparkle here just makes everything a little bit more elegant and a little bit more fun. On the back of the label says um, Retina Appellation by Tradition. Uh, the liveliness of the natural effervescence underpins the zest of the resin and the aromas of the selected Rhoditis grapes. Rhoditis is an indigenous uh, Greek grape variety, uh, bringing the taste of a much sought after type of Retina back in the modern era. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> uh, and it's made by Kechris, uh, which is a winery from my home city, Thessaloniki. So naturally, I felt the need to try it and let you know what I think about it. Next we're up, to continue with our next wine. First of all, let's all take a moment to appreciate this beautiful label. I am just so, so impressed by it. Every time I see this bottle, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy it. Oh yeah, again, <laughs> I'm gonna buy it. Yeah, it's just so beautiful and I need to stop blurbing and just tell you about this wine. So this is uh, a wine from Jason Ligas. Jason has uh, studied in France uh, and um, he is definitely one of the biggest and most interesting uh, Greek winemakers that are working with uh, permaculture, uh, organic, biodynamic uh, wines and he makes some of the most delicious and interesting wines that I've ever tried, not just in Greece. I really like the fact that he always chooses these fantastic grape varieties that they're almost under no one's radar uh, and he just makes wonders with them. And this particular one is Kidonitsa, right? You can see it much better here. Kidonitsa uh, is um, a grape variety that dates back to the Byzantine Byzantine? Byzantine, yeah, probably, <laughs> uh, years. It was very close to extinction before a group of uh, wine growers starting cultivating the grape again and making wines with it. And the wine is not white, it's not red, it's not rosé, but it's orange. And actually a hue of orange, very similar to this one. It's absolutely amazing. If you like orange wines, you should just run to the nearest store and try and find it. I'm not sure how lucky you're going to be because there are only a thousand bottles made, as you can see in the back label, but it definitely worth a try. So this is a very expressive, a very generous uh, orange wine with uh, lots of citrus fruit, but don't think about like a freshly squeezed lemon uh, or a fresh lime. It's more about waxed preserved lemons. And then there's loads and loads of botanical notes to it. Um, so like thyme and oregano, um, a little bit of smoke. There is a lot of rosemary uh, and dried leaves, uh, like tea leaves. It's absolutely beautiful. The freshness is amazing. And I really, really love this wine. You should give it a try. And just a side note here. We didn't have this wine on our Christmas table this year, but we had it last year and we absolutely adored it. Very similar label, as you can see. And this wine is made by Roditis. Again, Jason picks um, a, a grape that is very much underestimated by the majority of winemakers. Uh, it's uh, the, the grape that is usually used to make retina. He transformed it and explored his potential by creating this amazing wine uh, that is also fermented in oak barrels, like the first one. Oops, like the first one. And this is why they both called uh, Rovitis and Kidonitsa Barrique. Both of these wines go very, very well with cheese. If you're struggling with sweet wine and you don't really want to have cheese with red wine, which is totally an option if you want to and if you like it, these two wines can be such an amazing surprise for your guests to try with cheese. Absolutely recommend it. 
Let's go to the red, shall we? So, the first one is Karanika, again, sorry. I just, I really love the producer. Yeah, and it was the smoothest, silkiest, very seductive, but in a very elegant way, red. I really, really liked it. And we had it with wild boar, so a meat that it's actually quite intense on its own. And I didn't want anything too muscular or too big or too aggressive. I didn't want them to compete in flavors, but I want I want the wine and the food to have this beautiful balance. And yeah, that was that was an excellent match. I really, really loved it. Give it a try. On to the next red. Apla is a wine that, as the name suggests, uh, that means simply, plainly, it's beautiful. It's very sophisticated, it's very dangerously drinkable and I like, I like the logo very much. You might have also suspected that I really like the design of the labels. All of the labels are really pretty, aren't they? Anyway, um, yeah, Apla is a gorgeous, gorgeous wine. Uh, it's a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Xinomavro. So yeah, it has all this beautiful richness and power, personality of the Cabernet Sauvignon and the Xenoma Road just balances everything out with his sharp elegance and uh, freshness and crunchiness, I would say. A really easy wine to pair with so many different foods. I wouldn't be scared at all. So I would really recommend give this a try. It has a really good price point as well. It's around the 10 euro mark. If you want something really easy going and delicious and something that you know that you are going to feel very confident and very happy to pour to your guests this is definitely the wine to go forward with i really really liked it my dad liked it which is always a really good sign because he loves his red wine uh, and he enjoys wines that are really generous and expressive with a really uh, nice and persisting finish and that really ticked all these boxes apla by uh, Nikos Karadzas, uh, a winemaker uh, very well known in Greece and with very good reason. We are almost there people, just hang on with me. The last wine for this video is this beautiful dry Mavro Daphne from the island of Kefalonia in southern Greece and it's made by a fantastic producer, Sklavos, a wine that's coming from uh, biologically or organically grown grapes, and it's absolutely amazing. It's the most silky, intense, seductive red wine. It's made by a red grape called Mavro Daphne, uh, which normally is used in the area of Patras to make a sweet, fortified wine. So this really breaks the norm right here. Absolutely spectacular, spectacular. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it has these gorgeous aromas of really ripe red fruit, uh, a little bit of rose petals, like dried rose petals, I would say, hints of dry figs and dry sultana, crunchy cherries. I really, really enjoyed it. A wine that can go beautifully with any type of game. It has so much power and so much depth to it that can really stand up to the most intense of flavors and textures. So yeah, I really loved it. I really loved it indeed. Right, so this is the end of my first ever YouTube video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. It has been so much fun making this video today and uh, talk to you about all my favorite Christmas wines from the Greek vineyards. So yeah, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and do let me know any of your suggestions and recommendations in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you and explore more wines. Thank you so much and Happy New Year! Um, my lighting, I just realized that my Lighting is really bad, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. So yeah, that's the first one. And the color of the wine is not white. It's not rosé. It's not red, but it's purple. Very close to that hue of... Did I just say purple? I didn't mean purple. I meant orange. So, <laughs> start again.